Next morning, there are prayers as the sun rises. All the time, more people arrive. I know who they are. They are people from all the main tribes in New Zealand, because Hines Faka Papa goes back to the seven main canoes: Tainui, Matatsua, Tiarawa, Takitsumu, Tokomaru, Kurahopo, Altea, Hrota, Ngatoki Matafurua. Then comes the part Hines Papa told me was going to happen. Hines uncles are going to perform their skills for her. I think to myself how my eyes will be watching for Hines' eyes. Her papa comes to sit with me so he can tell me about what the uncles are doing. First comes Uncle Charles to do the challenge, the wedel, carrying a long taiha with white feathers tied to it. He moves in with careful steps and watchful eyes. He lays the sacred leaf, the ro, on the grass. Then he points the taiha three times and slices the air with it, turns and goes back on high, springing steps. Next comes Uncle Jeffrey pointing his taiha forwards. He high steps too, offering the taiha to Hini for her to climb onto. Climb on! I will carry you. Uncle Hemi comes out like a fierce warrior. He is shouting. He is frightening, slashing left and right and above his head with the taiha. The whites of his eyes flash. His tongue leaps in his mouth. He has come to fight for Hene, his puhi. If the enemy crosses a line in the grass, he points at. Watch out! He ha! Behind him comes another warrior. Uncle Royce leaps past him and rushes straight forward, scary and serious. All their movements are like the movements of certain birds. Do you notice that, Ruby? And his grandfather asks me. I'll tell you the main ones: the huia, the pukeko, the rudu, and the little tiwaiwaka, the one they call the fan tail. A strange, husky sound echoes around the marae. We see it is made by Uncle Charles blowing into a big shell. Is that a conch shell? I ask Hines' papa. We call it the puta tara. He tells me. Now Uncle Bernard is reciting the cope up of the haka that will be performed. It is from Tsuri, the captain of the Aotea canoe, our waka. It is about the importance and dignity, the mana of our people. It says how we must stay together. As the haka is performed. I am thinking of being Hine's eyes, and I feel as though Hine is in me. I look at Granny and think that she is feeling it too, because of the haka, because of the meaning of the words. Then a big group of men and women, all dressed in black, the women with the mai mai in their hair, sing two ancient songs. The first one is about aroha, love. The next song is about peace. It is only a little song, but I like the feeling of the words. Let us look to the morning star, for it brings goodwill and peace to us all. Mongarongo means peace. That's what our marae is called. Mongarongo says Papa. Peace. It's a good name for a marae. After the songs, the singers chant Hines Faka Papa. Names and names of Hines Tupuna, going way, way back to each of her canoes. As they chant, they sway and turn and softly slap their poi. I think of the names going back in long curves over the earth, like word rainbows. Then the bishop leads us in the mass. After that. Hines' coffin is once again picked up by her cousins and carried to a dark red van, which is lined with green ferns. A haka rings out around her. The words of the haka are the ancient words used when they first brought the Altea canoe out of the ocean and landed at Altea Roa. All of us sob and moan and whimper and lean on each other as we are full of sickness that our poor Hines is leaving her home forever.
but we are allowed to climb into the van and to keep her company on the journey to the family burial ground at Ererangi. It is high on a hill, looking straight across the Fawn Hills to Hinestupuna, the giant mountain Ruapehu. Hine's grave is open to receive her body. There are ferns spread all around it. Nearly everyone is carrying flowers to it. The bishop leads everyone to sing a soft, sad hymn and to say a prayer as the coffin is lowered into the ground. More people speak about Hine. The Māori words sound like a waterfall and I think they are slithering into the grave. Hine's papa stands quietly at the grave, listening. Then it is his time to speak. Tears fall from papa's eyes and nose as he talks to Hine and about her, her goodness, her braveness, his mate, her struggle to live, her cleverness. And he says her spirit, herself, is now on its long journey over Murimotu, over Ruapehu, to Te Reringa Wairua, to Hawaiki Nui, the final resting place of her ancestors. I can easily imagine that. Hine, without her tokotokos, her legs straight and strong, floating high in the air like a kite. There will always be a rainbow to show her the way in the day, and the moon will be her light at night. Her two favourite things. When we go back to the mud eye, we find that the big marquee has gone. The tapu has been lifted, the mud eye is ordinary again, the whānau is ordinary again. We are close friends with everyone, we can talk about ordinary things again. We can eat with other people in the farikai. Back home in Taupo, we don't talk much because all the words seem wrong. Dad works quietly in his workshop by himself, making a sculpture for Hine. I am the one who mostly has to look after Granny. But she can never smile anymore. Even when I tell her my idea about the rainbow and the moon showing Hine the way to her ancestors. Then one day, I go to the garden centre with Dad and I see a packet of rainbow seeds. We can plant a rainbow, I tell him. Dad reads the packet and tells me it's just a mixture of seeds that will grow flowers all the colours of the rainbow. I suppose we could plant a rainbow garden, he says. Yes, and Granny can help. Maybe it will stop her crying. You know how she likes flowers, Dad. So Dad buys the seeds, and we rush home and pick out a nice place for the rainbow garden, under the weeping willow tree that you look out to from the kitchen window. Dad digs and hoes, and I sprinkle the seeds on the black earth and crumble some more earth on top of them. Then Dad puts a statue of Hinne in the middle of the garden to guard the seeds. Granny comes out to help. They'll need some water to make them sprout, she says. She brings the hose over to the new garden and asks Katie to go and turn the water on at the tap. goes the hose. The water arches up out of the sprinkler end of it. And what do we see? Look, look, Katie squeals. Oh, I don't believe it, says Dad. Granny's eyes are wide open and she is smiling. A rainbow. Hine's Rainbow. So we call it Hine's Rainbow Garden. Now Granny smiles more and takes visitors to see the garden. She tells them how in spring it will be full of flowers of every colour of the rainbow and when we water it in the sun, a rainbow always arches over it. And a part of Hine is there in the sculpture, smiling and smiling forever her hands out to look after the flowers in her rainbow garden.